Welcome to Required Practical Number 2, in which we're going to investigate the effectiveness of different materials as thermal insulators. Let's have a look at the equipment that you're going to be using. You'll have three thermometers, a stop clock, three 100ml beakers, a kettle which you'll use to warm the water up, and then a range of insulating materials including funfair, tin foil, paper, a cardboard lid with a hole cut in it for the thermometer, a small piece of yellow blanket, and that on the end there is bubble wrap. You should be thinking about which type of heat transfer, conduction, convection or radiation, each one of these items will reduce. Now let's have a look at some beakers that I've set up already. First we have a beaker with fun fur, fun furs inside out and wrapped around the outside of the beaker held in place with an elastic band. We have tin foil, a nice reflective material, again held in place with an elastic band. And finally, we've got a beaker where we've put the cardboard lid on top and that should reduce convection and evaporation. The volume of water that we use is going to be one of our control variables. So this is how we're going to make sure that we get the right amount of right volume of water every time. So you have marked a line where 80 millilitres is. Once the kettle has boiled, I will carefully pour the water into the measuring cylinder up to the 80ml line. Note how I'm just having a close look and getting level with 80 millilitres to make sure that I have the water level exactly right. So just a double check. When we're sure we've got the right volume, we carefully pour the water into the beaker without getting any water on the fun fur. Now you'll notice as you pour the warm water in, the temperature on the thermometer or the reading on the thermometer will start to go up. Let's have a closer look at that. So check this out. As soon as you put the warm water into the beaker, you can see the coloured water in the thermometer starts to shoot upwards really quite quickly. Now you've got to be a little bit patient at this point because you're waiting for the coloured water to settle at the correct temperature of the warm water. And if you look carefully, it's still going up, 84, still going up. And you can see that it's going to settle at 85 degrees. So it's time to start the stopwatch. Once the stopwatch is running, you'll have a moment to record your start temperature on your results table. So we had the fun fair and start temperature was 85 degrees Celsius. Then all we're going to do is leave the water to cool down. Once we've waited for an appropriate amount of time for the water to cool, which in my experiment is five minutes, and remember the time is one of our control variables, it will be time to take the end temperature to see how much the water has cooled by. Now I want you to watch carefully how I do this. I don't just look at the thermometer from above, I make sure that I get my eye line level with the coloured water in the thermometer. This is to make sure that I get an accurate reading. Yes, well done. And our final job is to record the temperature of the water after five minutes of cooling, which in my experiment was 71 degrees, and then we can calculate the temperature change in degrees Celsius. So 85 minus 71 equals 14 degrees Celsius. So with the fun fair over, uh, over five minutes, in my experiment, the temperature dropped by 14 degrees Celsius. All right, over to you.